I'm going to take a little piece of paper towel, tear it to about the right size, and then now I'm going to fold this over that leg flap. Let's see here. You can relax just one part of an insect if you need to. There, that fits over it pretty well. I'm going to take a eyedropper with a little bit of water and just moisten that and make sure it's in contact with the uh, with the actual flap. I'm just going to squeeze it with the tweezers here a little bit. And that should fairly quickly soften up. Maybe just 15 minutes or so. So, um, we'll wait for a little bit and see. Uh, once that softens up, I'm going to build a, a little styrofoam platform underneath. And then uh, have a piece of styrofoam on top so it will kind of flatten it and attach that with pins. Um, and I think this will work. Let's see what let's see what we can do with this. All right, now it's been about 10 minutes. Um, I've built some little styrofoam platforms here, and um, I constructed this one to go underneath that flap with a beveled surface here that should match the underside of the leg, and I'll attach that with pins. And then I've got another piece with a surface that should press the top of it. Now, this styrofoam is pretty easy to uh, carve. If you just get a uh, sharp razor blade, you can see if it's sharp, it can just slice right through it. And you can just construct whatever uh, size platform. If you're mounting a specimen, you want the wings spread, you can build a little styrofoam platform that's custom to uh, design to fit that. Now I think this should go right up against that flap and that will hold those, um, yeah, just like that. That'll hold that uh, those folds flat until it dries and then it should stay that way. Uh, I think this is soft enough now. Look at how flexible this leg has become. So I'm going to pull the paper towel off, brace the abdomen first here so it doesn't move. There. Yeah, it's completely relaxed that leg. Now let's see if this is soft. Oh yeah, it's flexible. All right. So I'm gonna put this brace underneath. Yeah, that seems to fit just right. And I'm gonna use some pins to hold this down several of them because I want it really sturdy so I can put some pressure against it with the other piece. That should do. Now this piece should go up against the flap. Let's see if I can smooth that out first. Oh yeah, it's flexible. Look at that. Yeah, it moves. Um, it kind of bends this leg. It's almost like there should be a little more of a groove right here. I'm going to cut a little groove for the leg. Move the leg over a little bit so I don't cut the leg. There, now I've got a little slot for the leg to go into. Perfect. All right, and I'm going to push this up against that flap. I'm going to look at it here and make sure I've got it nice and flat. Now I need to trim that back a little bit more. Make it a 
little deeper. Let's see how that works. I think I want this a little farther forward. Yeah. Shape of this a little bit. All right, now it's dried a little while I've been messing with this. So I'm going to soften it. I'm going to put a little water on it here, put that paper towel back on, and let it soften up a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Shape this a little bit. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to peel the towel off. Smooth this out a little bit. And push that down put some pins through it to hold it in place. Yeah, that's sandwiched between there. Well, I think that should do it. Let's let that uh, dry a little bit. I'm going to bring this leg down here. Foot forward. Now we'll let that dry for a little bit. All right, it's been about an hour. Let's pull this off and see if it's improved. Well, there's still some wrinkles in it, but it does look much better. You can still see some wrinkles across, but I think it's an improvement. Yeah, it's definitely better than it was. Now, I've got some water-based polyurethane that I think might work well as a treatment. But uh, I'm going to experiment with it first and put it on the underside here and see how it comes out before I coat the whole thing with it. I think this will just bring some of the natural luster back to the surface. I'm going to paint it just on the bottom of this leg here. It'll certainly add some structural strength. Uh, and specimens like this can be rather fragile, so... All right. I will let this dry a little bit and see how that comes out. It certainly looks, brings a little bit of the color out when it's damp, but we'll see if that is still the case once it's dried.
I'll give it a few minutes here. All right, it's been a little while. Let's see how this came out. Well, it definitely hasn't hurt anything. I think it does look better. Yeah, if I compare this side to this side, this side looks less less dried out there. Yeah. Well, let's try it on the other side. This side here looks better than this over here. So let's try a little bit there and see if we get a similar result. It's still a little soft. Yeah, I think it's an improvement. I think acrylic base would work for this too. It's similar, it's like a water-based uh, clear. All right, let's check on this. Yeah, I like it. I think it looks pretty good. Let's try some on the forearms. Four legs. dry and see how it looks. All right, so let's see how this is looking. Oh yeah, it's adding a lot of um, luster to it. It looks much better. I'm going to put some on the outside now. just to make sure it dries. Actually, it's pretty darn good. on this. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And I'm going to leave it sit uh, here for a while just to finish drying. You know, the polyurethane definitely helped make the surface look uh, a lot better. So I think I'm going to call that a success. So here is the uh, finished specimen came out very good and now it was intriguing I, I had a orchid mantis in my teaching collection um, I didn't realize it was the same species I never thought it was the pink and white one but I pulled this out and had a good look at it and it looks to be exactly the same species so I think this one may have been originally pink and white this was given to me 
by someone who collected it in Borneo in 1979 when he was in the Peace Corps. Uh, a nice specimen. And then just for comparison, here's a few more. This is the uh, what they call a Chinese mantis, which has been introduced into the eastern United States. This is the male. The female is quite a, get, quite a bit bigger. Uh, this one's um, just under three inches, about three inches. So that's, you know, they're pretty good size. Now here is um, Deriplates desiccata. This is a mantis that looks like um, dead leaves. And this one's from Asia. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. It's probably close to four inches. And then there's this monster, which I got from the same individual who gave me the orchid mantis. He also collected this in Borneo in 1979. And it's nearly five inches long. And this is a really, really big mantis. It's probably the biggest one that I've ever seen even looking in research collections. I don't know what species this is uh, yet. I've had a look around, but I need to do a little more research on that. Um, so uh, it's a nice size mantis even at three inches. And then here's a couple of others just to show um, some difference. This one was collected in France. So that's some European mantis. It's got some little flaps on the legs and a nice little pointy head cone. And then here's a little one that I got um, in Arizona. I think these are often referred to as grass mantises. Um, not sure on that either. So anyway, there's, um, there's some mantises.